Right, so we're at the Gadget Show Live 2013. We're at the University of Sheffield stand and we're looking at something called Swarm Robotics. Now, hi there, I'd like you to take me through exactly what Swarm Robotics means, what these little guys do and how you've come up with the concept. Okay, so these robots are, um, are very, very basic robots compared to, let's say, humanoids. And however, they are numerous, so we have lots of them. Redundant, com redundant units, so if some of them break down, the rest just keeps on. Yeah. And that, that's the whole idea behind it. It's like a flock of starlings or schools, uh, schools of fish, or it's, it's like the, in, the, in the brain or the, the, the neurons or an embryo that develops. Yeah. So you have lots of units doing something complex together, and the complexity emerges from the interactions of all these units. Right, because it seems to me like each single robot is not programmed, not formulated. It is based around the whole and not the single unit. Is that correct? So this particular demo where all the robots start from random uh, positions and then they aggregate in a single location yeah. is such that uh, the robots do not need any brain. They don't compute anything. They don't need any, any, any memory yeah. and yet they are able to form and solve this problem without any, any, any math, without any computation and so on. So it's, it's an extreme example of swarm intelligence where the simplicity of one unit is um, it's, it's almost like, like a block of stone. It's completely dumb in a sense, but yeah. still all these interactions, the complexity emerges. Yeah. Yes. Can you see, did you take influence from maybe an animal or...? I mean, you, you, you could uh, take influence from animals like ants, for example, yeah. or, or fish and so on. Yeah. But it, this is even simpler. It spreads even particles almost. Like if you think of sand dunes, yeah. Yeah, you have these nice patterns. And, but on the other hand, they don't compute anything either, is it? <laughs> yeah. Of course. Mm. Now, I'm thinking about an application in my world, which is the musical world. Yes. And I'm thinking this is very interesting because you could almost apply this to making a song. Do you think that would be possible in the future to think of it like that? I mean, uh, absolutely. Like, I mean, nowadays, uh, lots of tasks are done by, by humans, like to compose a song. Yeah. And, um, but more and more, machines are taking over yeah. all these tasks. And, um, and like you have household domestic things, so machines are solving more accurately and faster. And music is also increasingly done by machines in a fully automated way nowadays. And I think robots will have a good future there to play too. So you could, you could have these uh, little robots represent some notes and so on, and then they interact with each other, and you may have a, a melody. Yes. And all what you need to do then is like maybe to get a feedback, or like so that, that a human gives some feedback that does it like it or not, yeah. and, and to try to, to reinforce really? the, the melodies that you like in the system. Yeah. So therefore, there could almost be a program in the future which learns what you like musically and presents you with original, new, forward-thinking music specifically for your taste I think so yeah I mean yeah. The, it's, it's it's in the far future yeah, perhaps, yeah, yeah, yeah. but but um, you could have uh, these uh, robots that are inventing some rhythms for example yeah. or some melodies and uh, if you want to customize it to your taste obviously you need to get some form of feedback to the system yeah. if, you, if you don't like it or if you like it and so on and then it will reinforce certain behavior over other yeah. yeah well look I mean I wish you all the best with the project project it's absolutely fascinating and hopefully we're going to see this really develop into something very exciting in the future. Thank you very much indeed. Great.